when you're a developer, like most developers know, like uh, to start like working, it's a problem. But then if you push yourself to actually start, then you'll flow. Because once you start, then you you get to like start enjoying, then you flow, you flow, you flow. Then when you face a, a problem, you make sure that uh, if that problem like it's persisting, just take a take a break, maybe a walk and all that. Then when you come back, you'll obviously like have like some ideas to actually take all that, that problem. Good day. Welcome to another podcast of Discover Talent at Vico.net. My name is Kachishorid and I am with Temba Makamo. How are you, sir? I'm doing good, sir. You good? Yes, I'm good, sir. You know, um, we've had the privilege to speak to other developers, uh, web developers, um, you know, software developers, but not a full stack developer. What is a full stack developer? Uh, a full stack basically means uh, you you develop like your front end and your and your back end. Basically, it's the same as like software develop. So okay. that, yeah, the full stack saying that you you're working on the front end and also working on the back end. Okay, so you've got an end-to-end -end view as a full-stack developer. Yeah, you, you start an application from scratch up until the end. So all the processes, you, you are involved. Okay, so if I think of processes like web hosting, um, you'll be involved in that, right? Um, and then your front-end languages, you have to be familiar with yeah, that. And to, then your back-end back technologies. Back yes. Okay, that sounds like a lot. So does it mean... For you to be full stack, do you need to start somewhere as a foundation in order to be able to do the end to end? Uh, basically, like to, to become a, a full stack, you just need to know how you to develop your front end, your user interface, and be able to like work on the API, like your back end. So basically, like you just need your front end back end and know your databases and all that. Yeah. Yeah. And and how would you I mean we use loosely terms like front end. Um front end language could be like what? Like HTML, would that be a front end language? Um or am I far off or SQL and so forth. Uh, what front end applications would you normally work with and similarly what back end technologies you would be familiar and working with? Okay, for for a front run, uh, HTML is the like the core uh, markup language because it's the one you display uh, everything like your test and stuff. Then the CSS for customizing your pages, like beautifying your your, your pages and all that. Then we we have frameworks like to make your your front end like SPA, which is a single page application. So basically, the SPA, it means like uh, you have a single file, single HTML okay. file, then everything just changes like through the DOM and all that. Then for your backend, uh, there's various languages to develop your backend. There's PHP, but then uh, nowadays people use PHP Laravel because it's the, the, the modern framework from okay. PHP. Then there's Node, which is what I'm, I'm using where I'm currently working. Then there's other uh, like C sharp and, and so forth. Okay. All right. So that's a mouthful there, but I was quite deliberate with that, right? Because there is in your profession, when you unpack it, there are so many technologies, so many languages, technology languages, um, that are involved that at times I think we you know, we take it for granted that everybody actually yeah. gets it and understands it, right? Yeah. Um, and how did you get into this? Did you stumble on this or was this the plan that you're going to get into firstly de developing uh, and you've been a full stack developer for a while. Um, how did you get into it? Uh, I think this started like uh, from my high school. So like I used to be good with maths. So on my, uh, at my metric, I didn't know what to, to actually do. Then there was this open day at SMU, Medunso, which is SMU in Aspagomakaka. 
So when we were there, I saw like that brochure, like the prospectors. I saw there was BS, BS in mathematics. I was like, oh, there's BS in mathematics. I'm good with math. I'm going to take this. So I didn't know that there's computer science uh, in that BSc. Then I was like, when I was choosing, uh, there was physics. So I didn't do well in physics. I was like, no, I'm not going to take physics. So I had to, to like take computer stats and applied mathematics and math. Yeah. yeah. Then after taking that computer, like after three, three months, four months, we were doing like HTML and all that. And I was like, oh, I can develop a website. Okay. <laughs> then I, I started gaining interest from there. Then I was like, okay, this is what I'm going to do. This is my profession from now on. Yeah. yeah then I got uh, like a path after like knowing this computer can develop websites. Yes, yes. Yeah, then I started learning. I started doing like more than like they were teaching us in school and all that. Yeah, you will find like sometimes uh, when you do something in school, I'm already like uh, know the thing. I've done the thing before and all that. Because yeah. I was pushing myself to, you know, like learn beyond what they, they're teaching me in school. Yes, yes. Yeah. No, excellent. And, and and I know that in your world, um, in as much as you can go and study, call it a formal degree, what's more critical is continuous self-development, right? Yeah, that's true. Uh, the certifications and so forth. Yes. Uh, because of, I suppose, it's a fast-moving world, isn't it? You always yeah. have to stay up to date with the latest technologies. So, so what is the latest technologies out there that you, you're looking to, to get yourself involved in? Uh, currently, I would, I would like mention the, the Microsoft uh, Power Platform because it's like it's a drag and drop. So you can develop something like a huge thing like two days and all that because it's a drag and drop. You automate your stuff. It has AI, like the co-pilot there and all that. So yeah, for me, like on my line of job, I would like to mention the Microsoft Power Platform. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, and what are you building uh, at the moment? So uh, maybe without telling us all the secrets, but what, are you, what project are you involved in? Practically, what are you building as a full stack developer at the moment? So currently, where I'm working, I'm actually the only developer. I had an intern, but the contract ended. So. Yeah, he, he had to leave us. So uh, currently, like, I'm building, like, three systems parallel. So it's a, it's a CMS, which is the content management for the website. Okay. Then uh, there's a learner portal, the website learner portal, and there's a learner portal mobile app. Yeah. Yeah, so that's the three applications that I'm busy with. Okay. And, and what's, what's the more challenging part of that? Is it more the front end or the back end part of it? Uh, for 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 the website, honestly, because I've been doing like web development uh, for quite a long time, so there, there isn't really much challenges there. But then for the mobile app, because it's like I, I just uh, even the technology stack that I'm using is my first time using it. So yeah, and also I was not like building apps before and all that. So yeah, I'm. Um, you know, like facing challenges day and day and all that, but then it's, yeah, it's nothing, nothing much. You just need to research and all that. No, 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 I'm, I'm with you. And you're building this mobile app on your own? Yeah. Is it challenging? Yeah, it's challenging because uh, for the past three days, uh, I was actually like, I was developing an authentication. So that authentication, like it was working yeah, it was working fine, but then it was in inconsistent. You'll find sometimes when you log in, your, your data doesn't pull because of uh, the token didn't like update. So when it sends the request to the API, the token, uh, the API says that the token has expired, so it doesn't pull the. So yeah, I was facing those kind of challenges. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I raise that because more often than not, we have this view that we always working with large teams, right? But there are moments in our career paths where you're actually working alone. Yeah. Um, what does it take to prepare to work alone? So what discipline do you have to have in order to do that? Because I'm sure it takes a lot of discipline in yeah. working alone to produce 
a finished product, uh, so to speak. Yeah. So basically, like, uh, you know, when, you, when you're a developer, like most developers know, like uh, to start like working, it's a problem. But then if you push yourself to actually start, then you'll flow. Because once you start, then you, you get to like start enjoying, then you flow, you flow, you flow. Then when you face a, a problem, you make sure that uh, if that problem like it's persisting, just take a take a break, maybe a walk and all that. Then when you come back, you'll obviously like have like some ideas to actually take all that, that problem. Yeah. So I would say like uh, like you need to you need to be uh, disciplined, as you said, and also you you need to understand yourself uh, how how good you are and how fast can you produce something. Because as developers, we, we like pro procrastinating. We we'll find that I have a, a project, then they give me a deadline. Let's say a deadline is in like three months, but then I know that I can do this in one month. Then I, I can stay that, that two months without doing anything. Then when that one month uh, due date comes, I start working. So if you know that uh, you'll be able to, to actually deliver that and all that, like just know yourself yeah. because yeah, if you don't know that you'll be able to finish this, it's better to start early. Then when you face challenges, you still have time to actually research those challenges and tackle them and all that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm I'm gonna add to those certifications, right? Because what I'm hearing is that the discipline of project management yeah. uh, is equally important in this line of work, right? Because you are basically getting multiple briefings, multiple work streams, projects, whatever we call them. Yeah. Each with different timelines and deliverables. Um, and it's a question of how do you map these, right? To ensure that you, you do it on time. But can we trust you guys as developers? How do we know that it's not the machine doing their work and, and, and relative to you? Uh, currently we're using ChatGPT. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, yeah, like you start there because before ChatGPT, like things were scattered everywhere. We yeah. have to go to uh, this site, like Stack Overflow, get something, go to maybe an article and all that. So now with ChatGPT, you just get there, you type whatever you want, then it pulls wherever it's pulling, and then it gives you. Yeah. 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 So and you work much faster than before. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you you studied for a BSc mathematics, yes, yeah. and 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 your honors is in computer science and information technology. I actually have two honors. So my first one is it's computer science and information. Okay. Then the second one is uh, applied mathematics. Okay. And what's next? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> With school and it's like, I think I'm done. <laughs> so now, yeah, now I'm just developing my career. Da, 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 I hear you. And, and with what you know now as a full stack developer, would you have chosen the same undergrad degrees? Um, would you have done a BSc mathematics and your honors? Would you have done it in that sequence with what you know now? Yeah, honestly, I don't. I don't regret anything. I was. I was actually lucky to to get in this tree, so I would do it all over again. Okay, so basically, what you studied, you are applying now. Yeah. Okay. No, no. I ask that because sometimes you know, as your career matures and you look back in time, you say, oh, I could have configured this a bit differently if I had yeah, a chance, true, yeah. you know, um, in that context uh, around that. So what's next for you? So, you know, when three, four, five years from now? For now, I think, because uh, I'm with the government entity, it's a set where I'm working. So yeah, I think uh, I'll give them like a three years because I need, there's a lot of things that need to be changed there. So my three-year plan is with us, uh, like uh, automating their processes and all that, because there's a lot of manual processes. Yeah, and that's important, right? I, th I think when one, at least from the general knowledge that one has around our uh, government infrastructure, uh, even technology, uh, a lot of it is manual, isn't it? So there's an opportunity there. Yeah. Um, to automate. Yeah, there's quite um, a lot of opportunities. 
Okay. Those that you work with closely, if we were to ask them and said, describe Temba in one word, what, what would they say? Uh, I think a lot of people will say Temba is really fun. <laughs> Honestly. Because uh, I actually even got the, the award for the greatest show. Yeah. yeah so uh, they will say Temba is really fun. It's a funny person. No, excellent, excellent. So thank you so much, uh, Temba. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, that was Temba Makamu, a full stack developer. And he's really fun. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so if you're looking for some development, front end, back end, web hosting and so forth, uh, you know where to find him. But thank you so much and for joining us. Okay, thank you for having me. Thank you.